next time, baby. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 actors who got fired from movies. Is that your girlfriend? Mm-hmm. X. For this list, we'll be looking at any performers who were reportedly replaced, forced out, and or some variation thereof after securing a film role. Note that the details surrounding such incidents can't always be confirmed or verified 100%, but we've tried our best to be as accurate as possible and provide more than one side to the story, if there is one. Did we forget a famous firing? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Chris D'Elia, Army of the Dead Zack Snyder's movie Army of the Dead was a popular Netflix release in 2021 that saw several hurdles on the way to its final form. Right, Peter, get up to the roof, get that chopper running as fast as possible. Cruz, go with her. She talks too much. Look, I'm excited to see my friends again, okay? Sue me. Having completed all of the regular filming, comedian Chris D'Elia and the cast were essentially wrapped on the project. In post-production, reports came out about Daelia's alleged misconduct that prompted action from the filmmaker. Snyder subsequently decided to cast Tig Notaro in the same role and to throw out the first actor's work. What are you guys doing here? We are putting together a crew for a job. Yeah, what does it pay? Well, if it pans out, we make $2 million for one day's work. $2 million? But That's my share. That's just for me. This inevitably involved a decent budget increase and some carefully placed CGI. The end result was a rather seamless presentation, with Notaro efficiently taking over as comic relief. Number 9. Ryan Gosling, The Lovely Bones You said for better or worse. You said that. You said it. It was a promise. Ryan Gosling is known for a wide array of acclaimed projects across the 2000s, but one movie that he missed out on was Peter Jackson's The Lovely Bones. Nick, if you start something, you finish it. You don't stop until you get it right. If you don't get it right, you start over again, and you keep on going as long as you have to. That's the way it is. That's what you do. It's perfectly normal. Due to creative differences, Gosling didn't get the part that eventually went to Mark Wahlberg. Before the start of filming, the actor put on a substantial amount of weight for the role, putting him in conflict with the director. Jackson and his proposed cast member parted ways soon after Gosling's physical transformation had strayed from the filmmaker's vision. However, it wasn't long after this that the performer entered another renaissance that included work in Blue Valentine and Drive. And what do you get out of it? Just that out of it. Number 8. Do Grey Scott, X-Men If you look at Hunt's operational history, and uh, I have, he invariably favors misdirection over confrontation. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, Do Grey Scott was in contention for some notable movie franchises. One of them was the first entry in the X-Men series. The plan was for him to play Wolverine, but filming for his other project, Mission Impossible 2, rendered him unavailable. Due to extended production time on the latter film, Scott couldn't take the lead in what became a huge opportunity for Hugh Jackman. Come on, we have to regroup. I know, but there's a problem. <laughs> You're not part of the group. Tom Cruise allegedly had a major influence in the performer losing the comic book role. It might not have worked out for Scott, but his villainous turn in the sequel to Mission Impossible was a decent consolation. You know, that was the hardest part of having to portray you, grinning like an idiot every 15 minutes. Number 7. Terrence Howard, Iron Man 2 In my experience, no unmanned aerial vehicle will ever trump a pilot's instinct, his insight, that ability to look into a situation beyond the obvious and discern its outcome, or a pilot's judgment. In the 2008 adaptation of Iron Man, Terrence Howard played the part of Tony Stark's ally, James Rhodes. He was originally set to reappear in the sequel, but a contentious negotiation got in the way regarding his pay as compared to his co-star, Robert Downey Jr. Come on, Sour Patch. No, Don't sour. be mad. I told you I'm not mad. I'm, I'm indifferent, okay? I said I was sorry. Good morning, you know, Mr. I said I was sorry. Me, I'm Hi, not mad. I told him I was sorry, but he I'm just indifferent right now. Allegedly, the entire thing came down to the former being offered much less for his planned return and then ultimately having the offer completely withdrawn. By contrast, some sources claim it was Howard who refused the deal. 
Either way, Howard didn't come back for the sequel, Iron Man 2, as a result. Don Cheadle then took over as War Machine for the follow-up, as well as the numerous spin-offs in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I expect to see you here. Look, it's me. I'm here. Deal with it. Let's move on. Howard has had a few smaller movie roles since his casting switch, but he has also found success on television. See, the streets couldn't defeat me. Disease couldn't stop me. Even God can't kill me. The day will come when Lucius Lion will return. Number 6. Samantha Morton – Her Many people don't realize that Spike Jonze's Her could have had a very different cast member at the heart of the movie. Destroy the past, make the future. Actress Samantha Morton recorded dialogue for the titular Artificial Intelligence, but the director realized that he wanted a much different voice for the finished film. He later hired Scarlett Johansson in an iconic vocal performance, scrapping the recordings by Morton in the process. That's really weird. Is that weird? Do you think I'm weird? <laughs> kind of. Why? Well, you seem like a person, but you're just a voice in a computer. I can understand how the limited perspective of an unartificial mind would perceive it that way. Given the importance of the role, it's easy to see that Jones wanted an exact tone and quality to the performer. In the end, it's almost impossible to imagine anyone else for the parts. I'm different from you. This doesn't make me love you any less. It actually makes me love you more. Number 5. James Remar – Aliens I only got one question. Who named you leader? I got as much right to take over as you. All signs pointed towards James Remar being in the sequel to Alien. He was cast to play Corporal Dwayne Hicks before an unexpected twist came in the form of legal trouble. Weeks into the production, the actor was busted for drug possession. This led to him being switched out for the Terminator actor Michael Bean. Looks like the new lieutenant's too good to eat with the rest of us, Grants. Remar was known for being a prominent character actor throughout the 1970s and 1980s, but this particular role was one that he ended up losing. His run-in with the law didn't completely derail his career, but it kept him from being in one of the more successful sequels in sci-fi history. Get to the goddamn door! Uh. Eat this! Number 4. Johnny Depp – Fantastic Beasts – The Secrets of Dumbledore I wish you were working with me now, towards a world where we wizards were free to live openly. To love freely. It wasn't long ago that Johnny Depp was one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood. However, his messy divorce from Amber Heard and the allegations that followed ended up altering his career. Oh, God. Why did she have to happen? Just when I was doing so good without her. The actor planned to appear in the third entry of the Fantastic Beasts series, but the negativity surrounding his name prompted the studio to find another actor to play Grindelwald. Depp was forced to step down from the role, and Mads Mikkelsen took his place as the villain. Do you really intend to turn your back on your own kind for these animals? With or without you, I'll burn down their world, Albus. There's nothing you can do to stop me. Subsequent lawsuits further complicated the actor's personal and professional life, leaving his future in the movie industry uncertain. I hate Paris. Number 3. Megan Fox – Transformers – Dark of the Moon You gotta go, you gotta go. No, you I'm gotta, not leaving. You need to go. No, I'm not go, leaving until I get Bumblebee out of here, okay? The live-action Transformers movies were a massive success at the box office. They also made stars out of cast members like Megan Fox, who was set to return for the third entry in the series. This changed when she reportedly said an unsavory remark about director Michael Bay's directing style. Needless to say, this didn't go over well with the filmmakers who decided to fire her. Look at the things I go through with you. And now we're underneath the moon and the stars and the three most beautiful pyramids on the planet and you still can't even tell me that you love me. While her reps claimed Fox left of her own accord, she was later replaced by the actress Rosie Huntington-Whiteley, who played a different girlfriend for Shia LaBeouf's character. I love you. I love you. You're the only thing I need in this world, not do anything to make it up to you, I promise. I'm gonna hold you to that. Fox has yet to return to the series, and it's unlikely given the severity of her comments. Number 2. Kevin Spacey 
all the money in the world. I always say, you never really know anyone until you've been through a divorce. Oh, I wish you'd have told me that three marriages ago. All the money in the world tells the story of the real-life kidnapping of John Paul Getty III and the attempts to free him. Kevin Spacey was originally cast as J. Paul Getty, the rich grandfather who needed to be persuaded to pay the ransom. How much would you pay to release your grandson if not $17 million? Nothing. After serious allegations came out about Spacey, director Ridley Scott devised a plan to edit him out of the movie. He decided to cast Christopher Plummer in the role and to reshoot almost every scene involving the elderly oil tycoon. How much would you pay for your grandson if not $17 million? Nothing. This was a much-discussed story at the time and is considered to be revolutionary in terms of changing out cast members. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Mia Farrow – Manhattan Murder Mystery After their controversial split, director Woody Allen replaced Farrow with Diane Keaton. I think the time has come for us to reevaluate our lives. I reevaluated yeah. our lives. I, I, I got a 10, you got a 6. Harvey Keitel – Apocalypse Now Keitel departed from the role that Martin Sheen made iconic. I was sent on a classified mission, sir. No longer classified. Ugh. Julianne Moore, Can You Ever Forgive Me? Before Melissa McCarthy, Moore planned to bring another take on the real life woman. You gonna tell me how? No, you'd be too scandalized. <gasps> oh my, <laughs> you clearly don't know me very well. <clears throat> Some things are just better kept to oneself, even if they are brilliant. Richard Gere, The Lords of Flatbush In an early role, Gere got into a fight with his co-star Sylvester Stallone and lost the parts. <laughs> Judy Garland, Valley of the Dolls The famous starlet was fired because of the personal struggles in her later career. Sure just needs a little doctoring. Don't worry, sweetheart. If it flops, I can always get you a job as understudy for my grandmother. Thanks. I've already turned down the part you're playing. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Eric Stoltz – Back to the Future Whoa, this is heavy. There's that word again, heavy. Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull? As iconic as Michael J. Fox was in Back to the Future, he almost didn't get the role. Before he officially became the sci-fi hero, Eric Stoltz was cast and filmed several weeks' worth of scenes as Marty McFly. I can't see into the future, but I know there is none without you. Director Robert Zemeckis later realized he had made a mistake and Stoltz was fired from the project for his more earnest performance. Fox was originally the first choice to play the part, proving he was destined to appear in the film after all. Luckily for the filmmakers, the Family Ties star was available to jump into the deep end of production. Zemeckis ultimately made the right choice and opened the door for more of McFly's humorous side. Jesus, George, it was a wonder I was even born. What? What? Nothing, nothing. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.